welcome one and welcome all. Welcome back, Foul Pals, to the People's Channel. Orchids for Dummies. Now, Foul Pals, I believe in a saying, each one teach one. With that being said, I have not been growing over a year yet. However, I will tell you some of my orchid tips and tricks that I have learned that might be able to help you. Stay tuned, Foul Pals. Okay, Foul Pals. Now, starting with my Vanda. Now, this isn't going to have any rhyme or rhythm, so you might want to just make sure to pay attention, get your notepad, and get to writing this stuff down, Foul Pals. Also, make sure to like, comment, and share this video, darling, because sharing is caring. Now, I also have a Facebook group called Foul Pals. Now, that is for the orchid growers that really wants to connect with me. Not only me, but other foul pals across the world, darling. That's what it's all about. It's about showing off your babies. You can't show me your babies on YouTube. So, join my Facebook group, Foul Pals. I'll leave that information in the description box below. Now, starting with um, handling your orchids, foul pals. Make sure that you wash your hands with antibacterial soap with your orchids. They don't want perfumes and lotions on their leaves, okay? That clogs up their pores just as well as yours, baby. Now, as you remember, um, my Vandal Charles, a memory plant, um, anytime you have an orchid and you see all of the split leaves, that's letting you know that the orchid is stressed. And yes, my baby have been through. He has been through. But guess what? Come on, 4K. Come on, 4K. Show him. It's a leaf down there, baby. It's a leaf. You see it. All right. But yes, honey, um, I'm, tr I'm doing my best with him. Um, so remember, anytime that you're doing water culture, you want to make sure that you are cleaning out your containers. I would suggest at least once a week, but in actuality, if you really want um, to make sure you're not growing any mold in your um, water culture environment, I would suggest cleaning it out at least three days. Now, if you stay tuned, I will show you how to do that. Okay, Foul Pal, so thank you for sticking around. Now, I want to make sure that I have gloves on when handling chemicals. The chemical that we are going to be using today is going to be just your regular vinegar. Okay, Foul Pal? Now, this is also distilled, and you know I don't promote for free, honey, but I will do great value because they did take time to... Um, to comment on one of my videos. So that's awesome. Thank you so much, Walmart. Um, okay, below we have some water, just some regular tap water. You're going to put um, as much vinegar as you feel is necessary. That's enough for me. Also, if you don't have any white vinegar, any vinegar is fine. Um, they have a vinegar cleaning solution that I would really suggest, but you have to use what's on hand most time. That's also an orchid trick and tip that you will want to write down. Before you go out purchasing all of this new um, all these new supplies for your orchids, most of the things that you would need to maintain a healthy Phalaenopsis orchid indoors is going to be the items that you already have indoors you know such as a lot of orchid growers you see have cinnamon cinnamon is right in your cupboard foul pals also the vinegar so okay now if you can look in here you can see i mean it's not like filthy from looking at it but all of this little fine debris that you see this is what you want to make sure you're cleaning out of your container each time that you have your Phalaenopsis orchid sitting inside of water for water culture, sometimes old debris or old media or anything, even if it's just dirt or um, dust sitting on your roots, 
it's going to um, cause that bacteria and that mold to, I mean, yeah, and that mold to um, flourish on your roots. Now, remember, Charles had um, mold on his roots. So I will leave a link in the info card above letting you know that video all about maintaining mold. This is another very important tip right here, making sure that we're cleaning out our containers. Okay, fam pals, this is the best way to prevent getting any type of mold growing on your orchids during water culture. Cleaning out your um, orchid materials. Also, while I have you at the sink, you can see that I have some orchids sitting right up here. The reason that I have that is because orchids that like high humidity, they do very well in my kitchen. Now, this baby right here, she is um, in full spike and bloom. However, because I have, I'm moving her around so much for the production of this video, she is starting to get a little bud blast, but we will get to that in my update number six video. Stay tuned, foul pals. Now, also, I told you about using um, Done detergent when cleaning your leaves, making a solution to fight those fungus nets. You want to use the Nun Concentrated. The other Done that I showed you, it said um, Ultra. Now, this is just simply clean, okay? So, this is very easy and um, very great to use when it comes to using chemicals on your orchids using um, home fungicides, foul pals. Okay, foul pals, so as it pertains to making sure that you have a healthy orchid, you wanna look at all aspects of its health. Now, a lot of us are using humidifiers to keep up humidity in the drier months. However, many of us do not know that we have to clean the humidifier that um, how often we need to clean the humidifier, and we also don't know what to clean it with. Now, foul pals, this is something that's very serious because as you saw in the glass container, the mold was very minute. However, this is going to be one of your most extreme cases. Now, this has been left in here maybe two and a half weeks. I have not cleaned it. This runs consistently, Foul Pals. It's always running. So this is um, an example of how often you would want to clean it. If it's running 24 hours every three days, it's going to be sufficient. However, look at here. This is very, very serious. Now, uh, how I you uh, the old me would just throw this all the way out. But now, knowing better, I know exactly what to do. And I don't know if you could see this. Let me try to zoom in. But it's going to be mold all up and through here. All up and through here. Now, living indoors, not only can this affect your Phalaenopsis orchid, but Foul Pals, this can affect your health as well. Okay? Look at all of this has to be clean. And darling, when I tell you, vinegar is not going to be the solution for this scenario. Okay, Foul Pals? But if you stay tuned, I will show you exactly what to do, Foul Pals. Now, Foul Pals, just as I showed you the humidifier, your coffee maker is going to be another example. Many of us drink coffee and we drink it on a regular basis. I would suggest at least once a week using that regular vinegar and flushing it out just as I have. After you have flushed it out, then you would want to um, rewash it or run it again through with just regular water from your tap. Okay, foul pals? Now, this is um, the vinegar that I ran through the first time, which is very hot. I'm going to use that to help clean the humidifier. Okay, foul pals? Stay tuned. Okay, foul pals, as you can see, I have removed all orchids from this area. Another important orchid tip and trick that you would want to know is do not use any type of sprays around your Phalaenopsis orchids. Now, foul pals, this also includes cooking sprays such as this. You don't want to use cooking sprays. <laughs> you know I'm not endorsing for free. 
But um, don't use cooking sprays, cleaning sprays, fabric cleaning or fabric freshener sprays. Even those, um, even these right here, Foul Pals, do not use these around your orchids. You can use them, but not around your orchids. Okay, so now we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up, Foul Pals. First thing that we are going to do is remove any water that's left in the humidifier. And the reason that we are starting at the bottom or starting with this first, because this is going to be the hardest to clean. Now, stay tuned. Let me see if I can get you a better view. Okay, Foul Pals, hopefully this is a great view for you. Now, what I choose to use to clean this, now, this is going to be a process. This is not going to be no bing, 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 we done. This is a process. And you want to make sure that you do this process correctly because this is something that not only your orchids is breathing in, but you're breathing it in. So, that could be a cause of having um, rhinitis or bronchitis. So, Fab Pals, this is serious, okay? So, I have some Clorox um, mold and mildew that I am going to get my life spraying. Now, as you can see, it kills 99% of mold and mildew, Fab Pals. So, I'm just going to get my life spraying it. Like I said, this is a process. So, this is going to have to sit here for a moment, Fab Pals, okay? It's going to have to sit there for a moment. Once it um, settles in, it will be a lot easier for me to remove the mildew. And I'm going to use that same um, toothbrush that I used to get the mildew off of my orchids to clean this. Okay, Foul Pals? Stay tuned. Okay, Foul Pals, so this is going to be the part of the humidifier that holds the water. As you can see, we really have our job cut out for us. But I have let this... Um, I let this get this bad before, so I am adamant that I will be able to just clean it and it'll be okay. It does look really, really gross, and you will definitely need bleach and not vinegar, and not vinegar foul pals. Also, make sure that you are wearing your gloves. Also, <clears throat> woohoo! <laughs> Also, make sure that you are not just sitting here and help inhaling all of these chemicals as well. But, um, so I sprayed that. I want that to be able to sit for a moment. And I'm going to spray this as well. Just like so. We switching, switching it up, switching it up. And, <clears throat> uh, let me get me a breath of fresh air. One second. Okay, okay, make sure that you're taking time to breathe the fresh air. As you can see, this worked fairly quickly. So I'm going to use some um, water to um, put on my toothbrush, and then I'm just going to start cleaning it. And you see how easy it comes off, Foul Pals? It's just a matter of you taking the time out to clean it. Now, as you can see, um, this is not too bad at all. Just make sure that you get all of the mold off of it before you put it back to use. Get all up in the crevices, found pals. All up and through them, okay? Do not be shy, it's okay. Now, ugh, stay tuned. Okay, found pals, now do you remember I told you I had that hot? water with the regular vinegar in it. This is what I mean when I said you're gonna use it on this. I'm gonna to pour to wash away the bleach. Cause just like the mold, you don't want the bleach right. Oof, oh it stinks. So after you run that through, you see the big difference? You're gonna use a towel and then you're gonna wipe it off. You see the big difference, Foul Pals? It really wasn't that. I mean, it was bad, but as far as cleaning it, it wasn't that bad. It's just getting in the habit of doing so. But the great thing about it is while I was um, 
while this was sitting up here with so much mold in it. In the meantime, I learned a very important tip and trick for orchids, if you stay tuned. But in the meantime, as you can see, this stuff really works. This did not take long at all. And this right here, it's just been in the sink. I have not sprayed it directly yet. So this stuff is very effective. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't even, you see, I have not washed in there, foul pals. This stuff, oh, it just works. It just works. But I'm still gonna get my toothbrush and go over it, okay? Oh, well. Let's wash the toothbrush out first. And we still gonna go over it, get it all up in there. And we're gonna use this toothbrush to get up in here, darling. Yes, God. Yes, God. It was mold in here too, baby. Yes, honey. Yes. You gotta get all that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, here we go. make sure that I post some in here as well. Now, after I finish cleaning this out, I want to make sure that I put some vinegar in there and let it run through. The whole, you do not have to fill it all the way up. If you want me to, I will show you, Fab Pals. Okay, I gotta take some air and stay tuned. As you can see, Fair Pal Pal is such a, such a mighty difference, honey. And this is what you want. This is what you, this is what you want to make sure that you are uh, maintaining doing. That's why I'm telling you, orchids is not easy to grow, Fair Pals. It comes with a lot of work, a lot of determination. You have to be very disciplined to pay attention to these um details, okay? Because all of this is going to affect the health of your orchid. Stay tuned, Foul Pals. Stay tuned. Now, Foul Pals, um, one more thing before we get, um, before I'm done with this humidifier. Um, another thing that you might say, well, how do you clean, how do you dry the inside of it? Well, if you have a vent, um, on your floor from ventilation, then I sit it on top like this and that air or that heat blows directly into it to blow it. Also, if you have just a box fan, you can sit it in front of it and just let it blow into it and it will dry it out. And it's gonna be, dr you want it to dry out before you use it again, the same way with orchids. You just wanna dry everything out to make sure that nothing else is still growing. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, so Foul Pals, while my other humidifier that normally goes right there, while it was out, I said, well, what can I do? And I had an epiphany because I had an orchid sitting over there that was in ICU, and that's the one that lost all of, it, all of its leaves. I will leave an info card above, Foul Pals, in case you haven't saw it. Now, I use this VIX... Um, this VIX um, humidifier, and it's not any um, VIX in it, it's just regular water. However, a lot of people don't know that when it pertains to humidifiers, you have two kinds. You have a hot blowing humidifier, and you have a cool blowing humidifier. Now, I don't want to make you dizzy, but just look up. So, as I said, I have a, um, a vent right above and to my understanding, I had the humidifier over there. And so I'm like, well, that would create a warm environment um, for my orchids. That way they can deal with the heat blowing on top of them if they have humidity. Now, if you see that last video, um, orchid leaves, then you would know that that surely did not work. However, um, right now in the cooler months, you know, you got your plants in the windows. Another important tip and trick is you want to make sure that you do get you one of these because although your temperature in your home might be 72 degrees, closer to the window is actually going to be cooler. And um, Phalaenopsis orchids are very sensitive to temperature. So that's something that you want to keep an eye on 
and something that you want to maintain. Also, as you can see at nighttime, I move my plants away from the window because it gets very cold and very dry. And that's not what you want. That's how you're going to lose all of your blooms, Val Pals. Now, as I said, as it pertains to this humidifier, it's blowing out hot, humid um, mist. And I think, I'm thinking that that is going to be very good for my orchids because um, right now it's so cold outside. It's very cold. And another thing dealing with humidity, if you haven't already seen the video, I will leave an info card above. Also a video, a video link in the description box below. But when it pertains to humidity, you want to make sure that it's at least 50 percent right now is 71 percent and that is good however um inside that also is breeding grounds for you to get mold and bacteria so you want to make sure i don't want to i don't want to scare you babe i don't want to scare you but you want to make sure that you have a high ceiling fan going on so that way no water is just sitting on top of anything okay foul pals I'm doing this because I don't want to get you together. Now, as you can see, that light over there, I'm gonna hold it up so you can see it directly. This is just a regular plant light bulb that I got from the store. Now, this is just gonna give extra light. When it pertains to the lighting situation of your Phalaenopsis orchid, you wanna make sure that your orchid is getting four hours of night and four hours of day. Now, as a new grower, I was getting my Phalaenopsis orchids running to every window throughout the day to make sure that they get as much light as they could possibly get. Now, my foul pal in a previous video, Inka Binka, if I could find a video, I will leave that info card above, baby. Yes, and we promote our own self and our orchids for dummies. But she said that um, they um, produce nitrogen at night. And, um... By me always having them under lights, they was constantly going and going and going as if it was exhausting them. Okay, foul pals? So you don't want to exhaust them. You want to make sure that they are getting adequate light situations, okay? This is only an additive because, you know, most of us are going through all of this crazy weather patterns. And most days, we have cloudy days. Most of these days, honey, when I see the sun, honey, I go outside and start running, tanning, and everything, honey, because we don't see it. One last thing, or a few, one more, a couple of more things about the humidity. This is going to be a fine mister, okay? When you're misting your orchids, you don't want to mist it from above. Mist it at a degree, like a 90 degree angle. Now, foul pals, look at the mist that comes out. This is a fine mist. You see? It's not hurting the orchid. It's not like a water gun, okay? It's very small droplets of water that I am putting into the um, around the orchid, okay? Just like so. Also, um, my Auntie Carolyn, she pointed out that during the nighttime, that is when the orchid opens up to receive humidity. So in the daytime, especially if you watered it, you don't want to go ahead, you don't want to miss because it's not going to absorb it. However, you may choose to foliar feed. My foul pal, Michael McCartney, his comments is going to be pinned at the top of each and every video. He has all the incredible advice that we will ever need. So make sure if you don't read any other comment to read his comment below. Okay, foul pal. So as you know, I have a lot of sick orchids that I have in the orchid ICU. And that's because, like I said, I'm a new grower just as you are. And as I said, a lot of this is going to come from just getting bits and pieces of knowledge and applying it in your own living um, situation because every environment is different. Every orchid is different. So with that being said, um, instead of doing water culture, which I do do on my um, orchids that's in ICU, however, I need them to grow some roots. And um, as you can see, 
when you have a Phalaenopsis orchid and the leaves get floppy like that, that means it's dehydrated, Fab Pals. So instead of doing water culture on it, I would actually sit them in the sink with a little fertilizer in it. That's why you have the white stains on the leaves because I've been um, basically foliar feeding. Remember that the Phalaenopsis orchid is able to obtain nutrients through its leaves as well. Now, these leaves are very plush, so that's a good thing. However, they're very floppy, and as you can see, it's about to start getting those cracks or splits in the leaves, letting me know that she is very stressed. Now, I have her sitting inside of some moss because that's how you would want to, or that's one of the ways that you would want to encourage um, new root growth. Now, if you do all of the things that I told you, as you can see, she does not have any mold on her, okay? Now, she's still trying to get some new roots, and she, you don't see the black stem right, so that's a lot of great things that you want to look for when you're trying to recover your Phalaenopsis orchid. Now, before I take you to the sink once again to let you know how I'm um, soaking them, um, I want to let you see this orchid right here because um, on, from the outside looking in or just taking a glance, a glance at her, okay, she looks beautiful. She looks healthy and fine. In actuality, that's not her tea. If you look very closely, and this is why you want to watch a um, orchid channel that has 4K, darling. So you can really see what's going on. You can see some bright patches in the leaves, and that's letting you know that it's a nutrient deficiency. So then you want to ask yourself, well, what is going to cause this orchid to have a nutrient deficiency? Now, going back to all of my previous videos, when I first purchased this Phalaenopsis orchid, she had a new leaf coming out. And that was one of the th reasons why I chose her because I was like, oh, she in full bloom. She got a few buds that has not opened and she growing a leaf. Oh my God, she is incredible. No foul pals. Actually, this was an orchid that was already set back because this leaf has not gotten any bigger. Also, as you can see, the leaves are very disproportionate. So that lets me know that this um, orchid has just been made to make those blooms and nothing else is left out of it. Now, the reason that she is not absorbing the nutrients is because the media is already broken down. Like I said, Fal Pals, anytime that you have um, moss or any type of media and it gets ooey and gooey and mushy and gucky and stuff, that's not what you want, Fal Pals. But while I'm looking at this orchid, another thing that I want to note to you is that when you are watering your Phalaenopsis orchid or your Banda orchid in water culture, you know, you have some people that say, well, leave it in for two days, one day, a week, this day, that day. Well, according to my fab pal, um, Yanis, and Michael, correct me if he is wrong, but um, when it pertains to the Vandas, Vandas only will absorb as much water as they would need before they close up the reception um, of the water. So, a little tip and trick that I noticed is, when you are watering your Phalaenopsis orchid and they get those little white lines in it, that's, that lets you know that it's hydrated. Once it gets this on it, then I would go ahead and take it out of the water and let it dry out for the remainder of the day. Now, everyone has a different method when it comes to water culture, so you have to experiment and find out what is best for you. Now, Fal Pals, I can go on and on if you want me to, darling. So let me know if you're interested in me doing a part two to this video. But I think the video is very lengthy at this point. And so I'm just going to bring it to a close after I show you how I'm watering them in the sink. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, Fal Pals, so I didn't know if you wanted to hear the water running or not so i let you see the amount of water that i would have in the faucet before i actually started putting in the fertilizer now i'm using warm water the um, temperature that you would wash your hair in that's the temperature that i'm putting the orchids in also i'm going to use some of the seaweed extract okay and that's because it says it helps promotes root growth now 
I'm also going to use some Epsom salt. Now, the seaweed extract, you want to make sure that you shake it very well. And um, as you can see, it has a little hole that it comes out of. The way that I use it in this scenario is I use just two drops because the, um, as you can see, the liquid is so thick and I would rather um, make sure that I am not over fertilizing them because they are um, orchids that are sick. Now, as I said, I wanted to use a little Epsom salt. I'm gonna use just a pinch. This is the pinch that I'm going to use. Just sprinkle it in there. Now this part I do want to show you because this is how I mix it all together. And you wanna mix it up before you put the plant in there. I'm using the hose to mix it up. Okay, Sal Pellin? So I will be right back. Now, Fowl Pals, I just wanted to see, let you see this before I put them in here. Anytime that you are doing water culture in a vase, you want to make sure that any old um, dead, decaying matter that you take it off of. Okay, well, in this scenario, if it won't come off as easily, you want to keep in mind that this is tissue um, to a plant or to something that is alive. So if it won't come off, then just cut it because this deb debris, this is what is going to promote mold. The mold does not eat on your orchid, but it does eat on decaying matter. And so that is what's attracting the mold. Now, since I did that mold regimen, I have not had mold to return on this orchid. Thank God. So um, I'm just gonna lay him in here. I'm gonna sit him in here just as so. And immediately, you can see bubbles coming off. So that's that gas exchange that you want coming from your orchid, Fowl Pals. Now, the rest of them, I'm going to put them in here as well. You want to make sure that you don't have sick orchids in the sink with good orchids. But since all of them, um, they aren't sick, but they need new roots, they're able to sit in the same water. And Fab Pals, um, you have some that cut the flower spikes off and some that keep them on. I used to cut them off and now I'm keeping them on because another orchid tip and trick that you would want to know is that's an indicator to let you know if your orchid is being properly fed because it takes a lot for these orchids to make a flower stalk. So don't cut them off because um, they could use that again to rebloom and you cut it off. And they will also eat off of it if they need nutrients to support themselves. So just like you say, don't cut the area roots. I would say do not cut the, um, do not cut the, um, flower stalk because it might need it. Now, as you can see, those white lines that I was telling you, they are forming on the root. Now, I'm going to leave them in here about 15 to 20 minutes, and then I'm going to put them back into their vase that they go in and let them continue to dry out throughout the day. Well, Fail Pals, I hope that this is an incredible, informative video for you. I hope that I brought some type of joy to your day. I thank you so much for tuning in. I want you to please like, comment, and subscribe, honey. Get the word out there. YouTube, I thank you so much for supporting me. Google, I had a foul pal tell me that she Googled orchid pots and that orchids for dummies video popped up. So, foul pals, just continue to do what you guys have been doing. I just really, really thank you so much. Stick around. Until next time.